نبدا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه والتابعين وتابعيهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله tonight i chose a topic and that is one of the ahadith of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and that is the hadith known for ikhtisam al-mala al-a'la the discussion that happened between al-mala al-mala they are the humans or in this case they are from the angels al-mala they are the higher the type who are the highest of company that is speaking about the angels a discussion that happened between the angels that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates to us there is a discussion that is mentioned in the Quran that happened between the angels the yakhtasimun right but that was about Adam alayhi salatu wa sallam and the shaitan being ordered to prostrate to him and him refusing that is the discussion happening between the angels in the Quran this hadith speaks about a discussion on a different topic and I will mention the hadith and go through the translation of it it is in the Musnad of Al Imam Ahmad it is in the Sunan of Al Imam at Tirmidhi and Al Imam at Tirmidhi he mentioned in his book that he asked uh, the Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari about the authenticity of this hadith and he told him that it was authentic it is reported also from Imam Ahmad that he authenticated the hadith the narration of Mu'adh ibn Jabal the hadith came from the narration of different companions a number of them are weak narrations this one inshallah is an authentic one it says that Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu said احتبس عنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات غدات في صلاة الصبح حتى كدنا نتراءى قرن الشمس he said that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم withheld himself back from us they are expecting him to come out to lead them in صلاة الفجر up until we were about to see the tip of the sun the sun in the horizon so it was so coming close to sunrise. فخرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سريعا فثوب بالصلاة وصلى وتجوز في صلاته. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم then came out quickly and he commanded that the iqama be made. The iqama was made and he prayed and the salah that he prayed was a light salah salat al-subh now fajr the fard prayer falamma sallama qal kama antum ala masafikum after he made salam he said like you are stay in your places in the lines that you are in thumma aqbala ilayna faqal inni sa'uhaddithukum ma habasani ankum al-ghadata he said, I will tell you what held me back from you this morning. Inni qumtum ila al-layl fasallaytu ma quddira li fana'astu fi salati hatta istuthqiltu aw hatta istaykadtu fa'idha ana bi rabbi azza wa jalla fi ahsani surah. He said, I prayed the night prayer so I prayed whatever Allah destined for me. Then, na'astu, I was sleepy in my salah up until I woke up. And I saw my Lord Azza wa Jal in the best, the best image. He saw him, alayhi salatu wasalam, in his dream, right? While he was in uh, asleep. عليه الصلاة والسلام فقال يا محمد فيما يختصم الملأ الأعلى 
He said, oh Muhammad, what is it that the highest, the highest of company, that's the angels, what are they arguing about? So, قَالَ قُلْتُ لَا أَدْرِي يَا رَبِّي He said, I said, O my Lord, I do not know. قَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ فِيمَا يَخْتَصِمُ الْمَلَأُ الْأَعْلَى قُلْتُ لَا أَدْرِي يَا رَبِّ قَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ فِيمَا يَخْتَصِمُ الْمَلَأُ الْأَعْلَى قُلْتُ لَا أَدْرِي يَا رَبِّ He asked three times, what is it that the highest of the angels, they are arguing about three times. Every time he says, I do not know. So, فَرَأَيْتُ وَضَعَ كَفَّهُ بَيْنَ كَتِفَيْ حَتَّى وَجَدْتُ بَرْدَ أَنَامِلِهِ فِي صَدْرِي وَتَجَلَّ لِي كُلُّ شَيْءٍ وَعَرَفْتْ He said, I saw him putting his hand between my shoulders up until I found the coolness of his fingers on my chest. And everything cleared up for me, and I knew, and I knew. فَقَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ فِيمَا يَخْتَصِمُ الْمَلَأُ الْأَعْلَى So he said, O oh Muhammad, what is it that the highest of company, the angels, what are they arguing about? قُلْتُ فِي الْكَفَّارَاتِ وَالْدَرَجَاتِ he said, I said, they are arguing regarding al-kaffarat, the things that will wash away the sins, means of expiating for your sins. Wad-darajat, and the means that will raise up the people in degrees and levels that is in paradise. Qala wa mal kaffarat He said, and what are the things that will wash away the sins? قلت, I said, نقل الأقدام إلى الجمعات Moving the feet to the جمعات, the Friday prayers. In one version of it, الجماعات, to the congregational prayers. والجلوس في المساجد بعد الصلوات, sitting in the mosques after the prayers. وإسباغ الوضوء على الكريهات and Fulfilling and completing and perfecting wudu, the ablution for the salah, in times of dislike. فَقَالَ وَمَا الدَّرَجَاتِ He said, and what are the degrees? قُلْتُ إِطْعَامُ الطَّعَامِ I said, feeding the food. وَلِينُ الْكَلَامِ And leniency in speaking. وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ And praying while the people are asleep. قال سل. He said ask. And in one narration, he said to him, if you pray, إذا صليت فقل. If you pray, then say. If you pray the fard prayer or if you the voluntary prayer, this is a dua that is being taught. I'm sure many of you know this dua. This is where it comes from, from this hadith. قلت اللهم إني أسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات. Oh Allah, I ask you doing good deeds and leaving the evil ones. وحب المساكين and to love the poor people. وأن تغفر لي وترحمني and that you forgive me and have mercy on me. وإذا أردت فتنة في قوم فتوفني غير مفتون. And if you want to strike people with a trial, a turmoil, a confusion, fitna, then cause me to die while I am not tried. I'm not, I did not fail that trial. وَأَسْأَلُكَ حُبَّك I ask you your love. وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّك And the love of those who love you. وَحُبَّ عَمَلٍ يُقَرِّبُنِي إِلَى حُبِّك And loving the deeds that will bring me closer to loving you. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إِنَّهَا حَقٍّ Surely these words are true. These are true words. فَدْرُسُوهَا وَتَعَلَّمُوهَا 
So study them and learn them. This is the hadith I wanted to remind myself and yourselves with. And we will go through the explanation of this hadith from one of the renowned scholars of the past, Al-Imam Al-Hafiz Ibn Rajab, alayhi rahmatullah. He authored a book. He called it Ikhtiyar Al-Awla, Sharh Ikhtisam Al-Mala Al-A'la, or Hadith Ikhtisam Al-Mala Al-A'la. The hadith of the discussion, the hadith of the argument of the highest of the angels, the highest of company, Al-Mala Al-A'la. Al-Mala of everything, of every people, Al-Mala, they are the ones who comes from Mala'a, right, to fill up, right, to fill something, right, and uh, Mala'a, they are the people who fill you with respect, fill you with uh, regard, right, when you look at them, they are the highest, right, the most noble, so those are the most noble of the angels, the high angels, they are discussing and disputing disputing in the good sense not in the bad one <laughs> about the things that will wash away the sins of the humans and about the things that will raise up the humans in degrees and levels in paradise this is what they are discussing and uh, uh, the brothers they did not assign any topic for me i just knew about it today in the morning so I just chose this topic and it just matches with what our brother Hassan Jazawallah uh, Khayran was talking about the fact that the people are coming to the Masajid in Toronto, in Canada. This is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose and select us amongst the many, from amongst the many who are, Allah knows what they are doing. Those who are also yani, encouraged and are suggested it's suggested to them let's go let's tag along let's go and they still say oh no i don't want to go i want to stay behind <laughs> right um, the angels are talking about this subject which deals with what we are doing uh, right now and of course the book is big i'm doing the summarized summary of the summary you know so we're just getting point form here, I'm not going to keep you too long, <laughs> right? So uh, don't run away and try to benefit from uh, those points that Al-Imam Ibn Rajab uh, mentions. <coughs> First of all, it was not the habit of the Prophet wasallam to delay the morning prayer. And it's quite understood also from this hadith that usually uh, he wouldn't do that. This is why he excused himself and he explained to them as to why this happened for that one morning. His habit was to pray when the uh, still it is dark, fitaglis. Still it is dark. Sometimes he would pray when it is dark, and he would pray for long. That's why when they will finish, the darkness would have gone away. And this is the meaning of the hadith, Asfiru bil fajr, fa'innahu a'zamu lil ajr. That you should uh, pray fajr when it's uh, lit up, for it has more in terms of reward. It doesn't mean start when it is so late. It means start early and pray for long. You know, read long surahs. The Salat al Fajr is the longest uh, in terms of recitation, so that the morning you know uh, after that the uh, you know it is kind of lit up it's not as dark as uh, it was uh, delaying salatul fajr to a very late time it is not allowed except if there is an excuse and uh, if you are afraid sometimes it happens you wake up you are late and sunrise is coming soon then you should lighten up your prayer so that you will pray all of it within the time frame before sunrise happens don't read long surahs and then one rak'ah is done on time 
and the second rak'ah is outside of the time after sunrise, do not do that. Rather, lighten up your prayer and make it complete. Make it complete. Don't rush your prayer, right? But then it is perfect and complete, yet it is uh, done and finished with before the uh, time uh, of the Fajr uh, comes uh, or goes out before sunrise. Also, if you kind of, uh, as here mentioned in the hadith, while you are asleep, you kind of get drowsy, you go somewhat, somewhat heavy, you see uh, a dream, and that dream makes you happy, then this is a glad tiding. This is something that, is, that will serve as good news for you, as you see, as you have seen in this hadith. Also, this hadith indicates the nobility and the highness of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made him excel over the others by teaching him things that he wouldn't have known. As in the beginning, he says, I don't know. Then after that, he made him know, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he had the right answers. وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ He taught you that which you did not know, and the excellence, the bounty of Allah upon you was so uh, great. Also, the angels discuss between them about the things that will bring the children of Adam closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels, they are different. They are different on different types. And they are on different levels. And they have so many different duties. And sometimes they wouldn't know things some of them would know, others would not know. And others would know more than the others. And they will, those discussions will happen. One famous incident, which all of you know, I'm sure, is the hadith of the man who killed 99, right? And then he asked about a scholar. They sent him to someone. They sent him to someone who was not, who was a worshiper, but not, not knowledgeable. And then he asked him, do I have repentance? And he said, no. How can, you, how can it be? Yani, he was not uh, knowledgeable enough. He was not smart enough either. Someone who killed 99, and he wants a good answer. You give him the wrong one. What do you expect he will do? So he killed him. He finished 100. Then he was guided to a scholar. He went to him, and he asked him. And he said to him to move, not to stay with the bad company, to go to another city. There are people there who worship Allah. Go and worship Allah with them. And he went on the way. He died. And now we have that dispute, that discussion that happened between those angels. Malaikatul Rahmah, the angels of mercy, and Malaikatul Adab, the angels of punishment. And they were saying, this group, he killed 100 people. The other ones, they say, he came repentant, jaata even, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal sent to them an angel in the form of a human, right? To settle this matter between them, and that angel in the form of a human told them to measure, to measure the distance between that man who died, the distance to the good city, and how far he was from the bad one, right? So whichever one of them he is closer to, then that's where he should be going, right? If it is towards the good city, then the angels of mercy will take him. Allah Azza wa Jal inspired the land, inspired to the land that the peace that's closest to the good city to be smaller and shorter. The distance for it to get to shrink and inspired the other piece of the land closer to the bad city to expand, right? They measured, they found him closer to the good city with a, just a hand span, right? So the angels of mercy took him. That was one of the 
discussions that happened between the angels. The angels, they uh, take care of the humans. They make dua for them. And this is in different places you will find in the uh, Quran. Also, uh, here, if you saw a dream, there is a good dream that makes you happy. Tell it to those whom you love. Don't tell it to everyone. Tell it to those whom you love, especially if in that dream there is good news for them also. You should inform them of that dream. As you have seen in this hadith that Rasulullah Sallallahu he said that he saw Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the best in the best image, and when those a hadith mentioning Allah's image, Allah's hand, Allah's face, whether it is Quran or hadith, we believe in all of what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. We believe in all that the Quran said as it is, without likening Allah to His creation, without thinking about that. كل ما خطر ببالك الله بخلاف ذلك any idea that comes to you that Allah is like this or like that then Allah is different from that because no one has seen Allah even the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم this was in a vision in a dream as for him عليه الصلاة والسلام in the hadith when he went in الإسراء والمعراج أبو ذر رضي الله عنه asked him Directly, as in the Sahih of Al Imam Muslim, Hal Ra'ayta Rabbak? Did you see your Lord? He said, Ra'aytu Nuran. I saw light. And in another narration in Sahih Muslim, Nurun Anna Arah. Light, how can I see him? So he saw the veil, as also in the Sahih, that Allah Azza wa Jal, Hijabuhu Nur. His veil is light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the light of the heavens and the earth. That is his attribute. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a veil of light. If he would remove that veil of light, then the whole universe will completely burn. The humans, they are unable, they are not suitable. Their, their, their bodies, their abilities are not fit. They cannot withstand that. That is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed himself, when Musa asked him, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, look at the mountain, if it stays still, then you will see me. But then what happened? The mountain could not take it. It completely got crushed, and Musa fell down in shock. Right? He could not. But in the akhirah, in the next life, then that is the greatest joy that the believers will enjoy in paradise. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةِ Surely those who have done good deeds, they will have al-husna, the best, and that is paradise, and they will have more. Al-husna, paradise, and more, and extra. And this more is uh, uh, looking at Allah's face, subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. Now, would other people be able to see Allah in a dream? A number of scholars, they mention that that is possible. However, we have to warn against those uh, people who fake that they have seen this and they have seen that, and they come up with different things. The dreams are only uh, a source of good news. Mubashirat. You do not base any... Islamic ruling on a dream, right? Because the Sharia, the legislation, the Islamic law is revealed and the revelation is complete and there is nothing more to add to it. So whatever was the religion in the time of Rasulullah this still is the religion in our time. Now, he mentions Al-Kaffarat, the things that will wash away the sins. First of them is al-wudu. And the wudu is mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Uh, after Allah mentions that, He says that Allah does not want to burden you 
do not look at the purification as a means of uh, like heavy loads, burdens, heavy duties that you are asked to do. Do not look at as this. Allah does not want to put haraj on you. Uh, does not want to put you into hardship by that. But Allah wants to purify you through that. The wudu, as in the Quran, is a means of cleansing, a means of purification. And this is also what the hadith is telling us uh, here. And we have a number of hadith. Uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu made wudu. And then he said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw him doing that. Then he said, the one who does a wudu like this, then Allah would forgive him his past sins. And his salah and walking to the masjid will be just extra. Right? His salah that he will pray, imagine you make wudu, your sins are washed, then you go and pray. So your walking to the salah and your prayer is extra. That is if all your sins were washed. If sins are still there because there are so many and the wudu was not enough to wash them, then you have the steps that you make, then you have the salah that you pray, inshallah it will uh, complete uh, that. It will complete the cleansing of your body from the sins that you have done. In the hadith, if you make wudu and you perfect it, then the sins will come out from the different uh, body parts to a point that they will exit. The sins will exit from under your nails, right? Min al adfar right? And also the one who makes wudu and perfects it, then he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. What happens? The eight doors of paradise are opened for him. He will enter from which one of them uh, he uh, wants. And uh, here in the hadith, it is mentioned the perfection, isbagh, al-wudu. If you have a thawb that is thawb sabir, then this thawb is not like it's, it covers all of your body. It's not like too tight, right? So isbagh means to do it fully to do it perfectly, isbagh al-wudu, right? So uh, here, uh, if you uh, perfect your wudu, especially ala al-karihat, especially in times of dislike, in times of dislike, right? Uh, times when it is cold, times when you are under your cover, right? In the morning, and it is cold and you have to push it out, take out this uh, cover and go to the washroom and pull up your sleeve, right? And use water. Maybe one time you find that there is no hot water. You have to use cold water or water that is not as warm as you want it to be. You still perfect your wudu. Then this is from the uh, acts that are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you greatly for that and uh, during cold times is mentioned in one of the narrations isbagh al-wudu ala sabarat the times when it is uh, the times when it is uh, cold <coughs> al-hafidh ibn rajab alayhi rahmatullah he is reminding us that how is it that we will be accepting how would we reach the level of being satisfied with making wudu and perfecting our wudu? He says, remember that you, uh, when you make wudu, then you are washing away your sins and you are being raised in levels and uh, degrees. And you will have whiteness on your uh, face and whiteness on your legs on the day of judgment on the day of judgment signifying the traces of the wudu that you used to do in this worldly life so remember the excellence of wudu this will help you to perfect it also remember what allah has prepared 
for those who are pun punished in Jahannam. They are punished with extreme heat and they are also punished billah, with the extreme cold Zamharir that is mentioned in the uh, Quran. And also uh, it, is, it, it is mentioned in the uh, Sunnah also. Uh, also, uh, you think about the greatness of the one who commanded you to perform the wudu. How great he is, how high he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who commanded you to do that. Remember that after wudu, you are going to go into salah. You are going to be in a private meeting with Allah. You need to be prepared uh, for that. You need to perfect your wudu before going into that private uh, meeting or private conversation with Allah. Also, you call to mind while you are performing the wudu, you call to mind the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you and he is looking at you. The fact that you are going through these hard, this hardship or those burdens in order to please him subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala and to completely be involved in loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who commanded you to perform this uh, act of obedience, the fact that he loves it, the fact that he is pleased with it, uh, the one whose heart is filled with loving Allah azza wa jal, then he would love what Allah loves, even if it was difficult uh, for him, even if it was uh, having some sort of uh, pain or some hardship to him, still he wants to uh, do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, loves as it is kama uh, yuqal al-muhabbatu tuhawinu al-athqal Love makes heavy burdens very easy uh, to carry as it was said also ma li jurhin idha ardakumu alamu if uh, uh, you get uh, wounded and because of that wound uh, this causes you to be pleased then I don't even feel the pain this is a line of poetry that a human is saying to another human a human that he loves human that who is dear to him he says to him if me getting wounded makes you pleased then this wound does not even hurt why because he's completely involved in loving that person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more right to have that kind of a love uh, so the first one uh, wudu and perfecting the wudu secondly walking to the congregational prayer or to the jumu'ah and uh, we have so many narrations regarding that that the one who makes wudu at home, then he walks to one of the houses of Allah to fulfill an obligation from the obligations of Allah, then his two steps that he makes, one of them will abolish a sin and the other one will raise him in degree. And every step in another hadith in the Sahihain, every step that you make to the Salah is a charity. Remember this, when you walk, or when you even drive and you have to park far away and then walk. Every walk, every step you make is a, actually a charity. As for the Jumu'ah, then walking to the Jumu'ah has extra excellence as you've heard before this hadith many times uh, that the one who takes a full bath on Friday goes early, arrives early, he walks, he, did not, he does not ride, he gets closer to the imam, he listens and he does not get involved in unnecessary talk, then every step he make, he will have the reward for one year, one year of fasting and night prayer. For every step you make to the Friday prayers, every step you make to the Friday prayer, if you observe those uh, etiquettes that are mentioned in the hadith, mainly coming early, then, uh, then uh, you will get for every step that you make, you will get the reward of one year of fasting and night prayer for every step that you make. 
the farther your home is, the more uh, the rewards uh, that you uh, will get, the more uh, it is difficult for you to go, especially during the darkness, going to the Fajr prayer, going to the Isha prayer is more difficult because of the darkness. Then this is why you have those narrations. If you pray Isha in congregation, you get half the night of night prayer, the reward of half of the night in night prayer. And if you go for Isha and Fajr, then you will get as if you prayed all night long in night uh, prayer. The third uh, quality or kafarat, things that will wash away the sins that is mentioned, is to sit in the masajid after the prayers. You go, you pray, and wait for the next prayer. This is like you are performing ribat, and that is protecting the Muslims from their uh, enemy uh, at being there at the borderline so that the enemies will not uh, attack the Muslims. Uh, you are staying in the masjid waiting for the next salah. This is the type of a reward that you will uh, get. The st staying in the masjid, it will serve to wash away your sins. That is because you are striving against your own self. You are st trying to stop yourself from following its desires because the soul, the human soul, you are inclined towards going out, uh, chilling out, you know, am amusing yourself, looking at things, looking at different things. That's what the human soul is inclined to. So if you fight yourself on that and keep it within the masjid, then uh, this is why you will get the reward of the ribat. Uh, as if you are a warrior, a mujahid, who is protecting the Muslims from their enemies. Next is at darajat things that will raise you in levels and degrees. The first one, it'am ta'am, being generous in terms of feeding people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this is from the reasons why people will enter paradise and will enjoy in Paradise. They feed the people the food. They feed them although, uh, for, uh, although they love it or for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They feed the miskin, the poor, the yatim, the orphan, and the asir, the captive. We only feed you for the sake of Allah, for Allah's face. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We do not want any reward from you. We do not want even thanks from you. We don't want that. We want to please Allah subhanahu wa taala. And in the uh, ahadith, there are so many narrations that in, that encourage us to feed. Even the famous one hadith: اتقوا النار ولو بشق تمرة. Protect yourself from the fire. Even if it be half a date, even if you donate half a date, you feed someone half a date, then do that in order to protect yourself from the uh, fire. Uh, they prefer others over themselves, even if they themselves, they have a need. And this ayah was revealed regarding that man who came as a guest to the Prophet Sallallahu and Rasulullah Sallallahu asked someone to take him in as a guest. And this man, he took him home, him and his wife and children. They did not really have food, but then they only have only as much. So they, he made himself as if he was fixing the, uh, the light that they used to use before, you know, with oil they turn it on, and he turned it off. And they sat all and showing him as if they are eating when they were not really eating, right? They preferred the guest of Rasulullah over themselves and over their children. They gave him the food and they uh, didn't. And Rasulullah told them in the morning, 
that Allah uh, is amazed at what you have done uh, the, the night, at uh, this night. Uh, some of the scholars of the past, they would prefer others uh, even when they are fasting. The food that they will use for breaking the fast, they will give it to others. Abdullah ibn Umar, it is authentically narrated from him that he would not break fast except with people that he brings, the poor and the needy. And sometimes his family, they would know that he wants to do that. So they would just, the, the poor will come, they will send them away. And because of that, then he will not even eat because they did not allow those needy to come in. Some of them used not to eat except if they have guests. And if they did not find any guests, they will take the food, their food and go to the masjid in order to share it with the others to fulfill this quality of uh, feeding uh, others. al hafiz ibn Rajab, alayhi rahmatullah, he said, now those are preferring others over themselves. He says that there are some who are stingy to even fulfill the basic rights, the rights that are a must upon them to give, like the zakat, like if you have a farm or whatever, you give the, uh, cro from the crops to the needy. He says, alayhi rahmatullah, هَلْ يُوصَفُ بِالْإِثَارِ مَنْ بَخَلَ بِالْحُقُوقِ الْوَاجِبَةِ عَلَيْهِ would someone who is even stingy to fulfill the basic duties that he has, would he be uh, described as someone who preferred others over uh, himself? Then he said, فَبَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ الْقَوْمِ كَمَا بَيْنَ الْيَقَظَةِ وَالنَّوْمِ The difference between us and those people, those great people who would prefer others over, others over themselves, the difference between us and them is like the difference between Sleeping and being awake, like the difference between sleeping and being awake. Uh, the second quality that will raise us in degrees and levels in paradise is lean ul kalam, soft, gentle, lenient speech. One narration mention ifsha ul salam, spreading as salam, and spreading salam is part of the lenient and gentle and soft speech, and this is in different places in the Quran. Say to the people that which is good. Say to my servants to say that which is best. Right? And regarding Al Hajj Al Mabrur, the acceptable Hajj, he said, والسلام, it has no reward but paradise. Maybe some of you intend to go for Hajj. Hajj that is acceptable by Allah has no reward except paradise. They said, وَمَا الْحَجُّ الْمَبْرُورِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said, what is an acceptable hajj? O oh, Messenger of Allah, he said, إِطْعَامُ الطَّعَامُ وَلِينُ الْكَلَامُ To feed people and to be soft and lenient in your words with the others. And that hadith which we already mentioned regarding feeding the food, اتق النار ولو بشق تمرة Protect yourself from the fire, even if it be a half a date that you donate, right? Rasulullah said, "Aw bi kalimatin tayyibah," or with good word, with a good word. If you don't even have half a date to donate to feed others, then at least say a good word. That is the least. If you cannot feed others half a date, then at least say a word that is. Uh, good uh, spreading salam is from the reasons why uh, people would enter paradise shall I inform you shall I guide you to something that if you do then you will love one another spread the greetings of peace uh, between uh, uh, between you between your uh, cells and uh, here feed others and have soft speech. Because if you feed others, but you're not nice to them in your words, then th they might turn to be not, they don't want your food <laughs> that you are going to give them. Because you're going to hurt them by your words, then that is not uh, suitable. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, one of the 
statements that uh, that are mentioned from Luqman that he advised his son saying ya bunay litakun kalimatuka tayyibah wa wajhuka munbasitan my son let your word be good and let your face be cheerful he said takun ahabba ila an-nas mimman yu'tihim al-dhahab wal if you do that good word cheerful face then you will be more beloved to the people than the one who gives them gold and silver. And we are told in the explicitly in the hadith that you will not be able to cover all the people. You cannot donate to the people. You cannot cover all of them with your wealth. Even if you give one cent to each and every one, you will be uh, poor overnight, right? But then you can treat them nicely. You can do that. So uh, just uh, do uh, this. Even when you are commanding good and forbidding evil, the scholars, they emphasize that at that time when you are telling someone this is right or this is wrong, that one you need to be even more delicate and more specifically you are commanded to be nice. As some of the scholars of the past, they said, you wouldn't make anyone angry and then he would accept from you, right? And in the Quran, it says that you should do that, right? With that which is best. And Umm Darda, she said, Man wa'adha akhahu sirran faqad zana, wa man wa'adhahu alaniya faqad shana. The one who advises, admonishes his brother secretly, then he surely would adorn him. And he would give him something that will beautify him. And the one who advises him in the open, in front of the others, then he has surely disgraced him. He has surely put him into uh, shame. Likewise, if you are hurt with words, then we are recommended, we are ordered in Islam to speak back with words that are good. Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Repel that uh, whatever people do to you, you push it back, you repel it, you treat him back with that which is best. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers, Yadrauna bil hasanati sayya. Ulaika lahum uqba dar. They repel an evil with good. Those are the ones who will end up having paradise, right? قال بعض السلف, some of the scholars of the past, they said, هو الرجل يسبه الرجل فيقول له إن كنت صادقا فغفر الله لي وإن كنت كاذبا فغفر الله لك. He said here that this is regarding you repel the evil with good. He said this is the man who gets insulted by another man so he says to him, if you are truthful, regarding what you said about me, if you are truthful in what you said about me, then may Allah forgive me. But if you are not telling the truth about me, then may Allah forgive you, right? If you are truthful, may Allah forgive me. And if you are not truthful, may Allah forgive you, right? Yadrauna bil hasanati sayya. They repel, they push back the evil, with that which is good. The third quality that is mentioned in ad darajat raising you levels and degrees in paradise, as salatu bil-layl, when nasu niyam, praying at night when the people are asleep. And uh, this uh, in the famous hadith, a'adattu li ibadi salihin I have prepared for my righteous servants, ma la ra'at, that which no eye has seen. وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ No ear has heard of. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And it never crossed the mind, it never crossed the heart of a human being. اِقْرَأُوا إِنْ شِئْتُمْ فَلَا تَعْلَمُوا نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم then he said, recite if you wish, no soul knows what has been hidden for them of the coolness of die, of satisfaction as a reward because of what they used to uh, do. And this uh, uh, was in the context of the night prayer, the night prayer, 
right? And there are so many narrations and so many uh, words that are from the scholars of the past that are mentioned in this regard. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he was told, لا نستطيع قيام الليل. We cannot perform night prayers. قال أبعدتكم ذنوبكم. He said, it is your sins that made you far away from achieving that. وقيل للحسن أعجزنا قيام الليل. It was told to Al-Hasan, Al-Hasan al-Basri alayhi rahmatullah. We were unable to perform night prayer. قال قيدتكم خطاياكم. He said, it is your sins that caused you to be tied up, not being able to perform night prayers. And at the end, uh, the dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'l al-khayrat wa tark al-munkarat. And Rasulullah sallallahu used to love the collective words of dua. Oh Allah, I ask you, doing good deeds and leaving the evil ones. You are including everything. Then, wahubb al-masakin. Specifically, the love of the poor and the needy. Right? This love is based on loving for the sake of Allah. Many times the people love the others because they have money. They have status. Right? The people who have wealth and status, they are loved because people think they can get through to them and achieve things through them. And there are those who love others, relatives and the likes of that. Loving the poor and the needy is based on nothing but seeking the face of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why it is mentioned here. And we are told that those poor people, they enter paradise first, 500 years before the uh, rich ones, right? And loving the poor, it will make you do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being kind to them, uh, you wouldn't be doing that except out of you trying to please Allah. Being around them will take away from you the pride and the arrogance that the people have. Some people do not even want to sit with someone who is uh, poor, right? They are too proud, too arrogant to do something like that. Also, being around them will make you pleased, satisfied, and content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Otherwise, if you are around those who are very wealthy, then every day you look at what they have of the goodness of this world. Then you look at yourself, you find you don't have as much as they do. You might look down upon Allah's favors upon you. So by being around them, you will always appreciate whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. The miskin is of two types. There is the miskin that openly asks, and there is the higher one that is the miskin who does not even show his need. And therefore, the people don't know him in order to donate for him, right? So this is the higher uh, of the, uh, the two. And um, the true miskin that is mentioned here, right, is the one whom, uh, whose heart has been uh, uh, shattered, has been humbled before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to fearing Allah, due to loving Allah. The miskin, the poor, will not be praised at all without having this. See, when someone does not have much, then he is somehow humble and he is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that. He doesn't have much to take him away from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the rich ones. But then if you have someone who is poor and who is not humble and is not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is actually a jabbar, yani someone who is uh, really yani an arrogant one, but then he doesn't even have reasons why to be arrogant. This is why uh, those types of people, they are from the ones 
whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at them on the day of judgment. Ailun mustakbir. Someone who is needy, yet he is at the same time arrogant. He doesn't have even the reasons or the causes leading him to become arrogant, yet uh, he is. وَحُبَّ الْمَسَاكِينَ وَأَنْ تَغْفِرَ لِي وَتَرْحَمَنِي We are commanded to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for his forgiveness and his mercy. وَقُلْ رَبِّ غْفِرْ وَرْحَمْ Say, O oh Lord, forgive and have mercy on me. Right? تَغْفِرَ لِي وَتَرْحَمَنِي مَغْفِرَة is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, uh, cover and conceal your sin and also to protect you from its evil as for mercy then it is for you to be entered paradise and Allah Azza wa says to paradise anti rahmati you are my mercy right so Allah if he forgives you then he conceals and covers your sin so people don't know it you are not disgraced by it and he will wash the sin away as for the mercy then he will enter you into uh, paradise he mentions here in the dua that if you strike people with some sort of fitna turmoil confusion then take me while i'm not being tried the trials are so so many and rasulullah commanded his companions to seek refuge with allah from the different types of fitan and we should every salah if you do not know this dua, you have to learn this dua because this is part of your salah that you should do on a daily basis. In the five times, uh, the five daily prayers, you seek refuge with Allah from Adab Jahannam, Adab Al Qabr, Fitna Al Mahya Al Mamat, and Fitna Al Masih Al Dajjal. You have to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala always to be protected from trials, and this is a, a hadith that Rasulullah Sallam taught us to make this dua. In every salah, every salah, we should not miss it, seeking Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from the trials of these major things. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said to us, said to the Muslims, he does not fear poverty for them. Rather, he fears for them worldly pleasures that will be completely opened up, doors for worldly pleasures that will be completely opened up for them. Then you will get busy like those nations before you were busy with that and then you will be competing in this as they were competing and therefore you will be destroyed as the previous nations were destroyed rasulullah sallam mentioned uh, to the men in specific that they should be aware of the fitna of the women and also he mentioned specifically that every nation has a trial and the trial of my nation is money. Fitna to ummati al-mal. And everybody here in this worldly life is a trial for the other. The woman to another woman, uh, a man to another man, the man to the woman, the woman to the man, the poor to the uh, rich, the rich to the poor. All of that is a trial. Allah Azza wa tries us with good things and uh, bad things. Uh, this is just a trial. This is just a trial and the believer, he is tested with this so that he, it will show how thankful of a servant to Allah Azza he is and so that it will show how much patience he can show for the sake of Allah Subhanahu uh, Wa Ta'ala. Lastly, أَسْأَلُكَ حُبَّكَ وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ you ask Allah Azza wa Jal for his love and the love of those who love him and the love of an action, anything that will lead you to loving him. The love here has two levels. The type that is a must, that is compulsory and that is that you must love what Allah loves of the obligations, the wajibat. And you must hate what Allah hates of the prohibited things. This is the least. This is the least. And the fact that you commit some prohibi prohibitions or leave some uh, obligations, this shows that your love for your Lord is 
a low type of uh, love, is not complete, is incomplete. The second level of love is the level of those who are closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, al muqarrabin and this is for your heart to be filled with the love of Allah to a point that you are now loving things that are voluntary and you are striving to fulfill the things that are extra, that are nawafil, that are beloved to Allah and to stay away from the things that are makruhat, that are disliked by Allah and for you to reach a level where you are not only patient but you are actually pleased with whatever destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines uh, for you and uh, in order for you to love Allah Azza wa Jal this necessitates that you love the people and the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and from the greatest things that will lead you to love Allah Azza wa Jal of the things that are uh, will bring you closer to Allah and make you love him uh, recitation of the Quran in specific Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said لا يسأل أحدكم نفسه إلا عن نفسه إلا القرآن فمن أحب القرآن فهو يحب الله ورسوله let no one ask amongst you let no one ask himself about himself nothing but the Quran that's what you need to ask yourself about so the one who loves the Quran then he loves Allah and his messenger from the greatest things that will bring you closer to Allah and make you from those who love him, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one gets involved in remembering Allah a lot except that this will lead him to loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more. And this is the sign of loving Allah. If you find yourself remembering Allah much, then this is a sign that you love him uh, a lot. You will never love anything except that you will mention it uh, a lot. Uh, uh, and from the signs of those who love Allah, according to Al-Hafidh Ibn Rajab alayhi rahmatullah, is for you to love to be in seclusion, speaking privately to Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, especially and specifically in the darkness of the night, uh, Al-Imam Al-Hafidh Ibn Rajab, he finished his work by saying, speaking about those who love Allah so much, he said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ مِثْلُ تَقْوَاهُمْ لَمْ يَدْرِي مَنْ لَذِي أَبْكَاهُمْ The one who doesn't have the taqwa that those people, the lovers of Allah, had, then he wouldn't even tell, he wouldn't even recognize what is it that makes them cry, right? And he, you might reach a, a point where you cannot even sense why those people love Allah so much to a point that they cry. The reason is the person does not have the taqwa that they have. This is why they do not know why they are uh, crying. He said also uh, signifying, yani symbolizing uh, the same thing. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُشَاهِدْ جَمَالَ يُوسُفْ لَمْ يَدْرِي مَنْ لَذِي آلَمَ قَلْبَ يَعْقُوبِ he said that the one who did not see the beauty, how handsome Yusuf was, then he wouldn't know, he wouldn't recognize what is it that caused the heart of Yaqub to feel the pain, right? So in order for you to become a lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to do those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And when you do that, then you will start to taste that love and that closeness, that which will bring you closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this way, you will even start to feel and sense and recognize the love, the great love that those lovers have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit all of us from what we heard and to shower His mercy upon Al-Imam Al-Hafidh Ibn Rajab alayhi rahmatullah that we benefited from his uh, work and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from a people who listen to a statement and follow the best of it and to make what we heard, what we said, we, what we benefited from today to be a proof 
and evidence for us, not a proof against us. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Jazakun Allah khayran. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. We stop here. The lecture is finished. Those who would like to leave, uh, you can leave. Those who want to stay and ask a question or make a comment, uh, you are more than welcome. We give you uh, 10 minutes or 5 minutes, uh, inshallah. Otherwise, all of us will leave, inshallah. Fadl. Yes. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu feek. Yes. Yes, so basically uh, uh, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. Now uh, we understood, I think I'm trying to paraphrase, uh, you know. So Allah is light, he is the light of the heavens and the earth, right? And his veil is light, right? His veil is light. So. On the day of judgment, the believers will be able to see Allah, to see him directly, right? As in one of the ahadith, that as clearly as you see the moon when it is a full moon, you know, when you see the full moon, you see it so clear. So, so clearly, you, we will see Allah, uh, the believers will see Allah, uh, Azza wa Jal, right? Now, this does not mean that they will be able to see him and fully comprehend him, right? It doesn't mean that. But they will be able to see him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, on the day of judgment, right? I, I hope I, I answered. They will be able to see Allah directly, right? right? And they will see him so clearly, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment, this does not mean that they will fully and because in the uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِهِ عِلْمًا He encompasses everything, but no one can encompass him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So that is, that is the case. You're more than welcome, inshallah. And this is one of the greatest enjoyments that the people of paradise will, will have, right? Yes, brother. Yes. Uh huh. In the next life, yes, I said the next life. In paradise, the greatest enjoyment in paradise is that. On the day of judgment, yes, that will happen too. Even he will uh, come to the unbelievers also, right, on the day of judgment. But in a way that they do not recognize him, right? That's in, in Sahih al-Bukhari, right? In Sahih al-Bukhari. In uh, Surah Noon, if you have Tafsir ibn Kathir, Surah al-Qalam, the pen, you can read that hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari there. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا That ayah. There you will find that hadith. But seeing Allah 
in paradise is the greatest enjoyment that is there, right? Is the reward, yeah, that's different from that other one, yes. That one is on the Day of Judgment, yes. Yes. La, all, all of the believers should have that uh, enjoyment. Although, uh, as the different pleasures in paradise, they are not in the same uh, way. So each one is, is in their own level. But all of them will be seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes, in paradise. Yes. The first thing is knowing the excellence of, of that and how rewarding that is. Secondly, starting even with something that is little. Some of us think that night prayer, it means you have to wake up at 2 o'clock and pray for 2 or 3 hours, right? <laughs> it's, not, it's not so. It's not so. And uh, even <coughs> praying before going to sleep, if you are someone who's a heavy sleeper, you can't wake up, you can pray even before going to sleep, right? And that will be part of night prayer, right? So, yani, inshallah, uh, uh, as in the hadith, if uh, uh, a man wakes up and wakes up his wife, or the wife wakes up her husband, right? And if they refuse, they sprinkle water on them, <laughs> right? And then they wake up, they pray two rak'at, they will be written from الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات right uh, so even as little as that right even you wake up you make wudu you make dua you pray two rak'at and then you can go back to sleep it doesn't have to be for too long and then you manage your time maybe in the winter time when the night is long you can pray longer in the uh, summertime when the night is shorter you can you know make it shorter and and the likes of that the the issue is for you to be you know sincere in doing this and then in those times when um, you cannot maybe uh, pray for long at night time because the night is short you can fix that with praying during the day salatul duha you pray more in the duha time so there are ways and means it's just that you know yani if you are thinking about that wanting to do that wanting to please allah then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up doors uh, for you right that is that is the case allah knows best Yes, uh, if, if someone is afraid that he, they might not be able to wake up, uh, they should be uh, praying with her before going to sleep. If they wake up later on, they pray in sets of two, and they do not repeat the with her again. They can pray two or four or six, they do not repeat with her again. But if someone, uh, he knows he can wake up, then it's better for them to leave the with her prayer to later uh, at night. But if they are not sure, then they should be sharp enough to secure the winter prayer so that they don't miss it, right? All of that is Salat al-Duha. Al-Ishraq is just, you know, you pray it once after the sun rises, like 10 or 15 minutes, right? And uh, al-awabin is the time when uh, the sun is the hottest, right? It's called al-awabin, salat al-duha. 
right? But it's still uh, duha. It's considered part of duha prayer. Yes, ten minutes after sunrise, up to ten minutes before, around ten minutes before the published time of dhuhr. That is the time of duha. Uh, he recommended it, alayhi salatu wasalam, he recommended it to pray it on a daily basis. But he himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, it is reported from him that he did and uh, it is reported that he didn't. According to the different situations that the person would go through. But with his words, alayhi salatu wasalam, he recommended it for us to do on a daily basis. Okay? On a daily basis. The text. Uh, you have uh, the green one, a dua. Uh, not, not, not the orange one. The green. Yeah. That should be there. Yes. Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'al al-khayrat wa tark al-munkarat. It's in the Sunan of uh, Tirmidhi. Uh, you mean uh, they put what title um, I'm not sure about يعني هو the title of this hadith usually that's what they use اختصام الملأ الأعلى right but then uh, it isn't يعني you can uh, um, it's in Sahih al Jama'ah and it's, it's different uh, in different books. It's in there. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. It's online on there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are no issues, yeah. Inshallah. No problem. Inshallah. Right? Tayyib, Jazakullah khairan. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiru ka tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You're more than welcome. Barakallah fiqh. This is the here. This is the end of it. Is the dua? This is the whole hadith here. Yeah, sure. This is the hadith here, and 